Warning everyone, pure prime time passion is coming your way. This is straight from the heart. It's a topic I have been thinking about for quite a while, but something happened today, which I'll share with you a little later, that led me to make this video right here and right now. And this has to do with what is the number one characteristic or trait that I feel leads to the most success in reselling for me and in other areas of my life, such as other business ventures that I've been involved with, my professional career, and my personal life. Now, I've heard this question asked to many other resellers and many other people in different areas of business and in life who've had lots of success. And there's lots of great answers to that question, which, you know, there's no wrong answer to it. After all, it's personal to the individual. But I would think about the answer and I would say, is that what I would pick for me? And some of the answers are great. They're things like being highly motivated, uh, being well organized, having great time management skills, having a lot of specialized knowledge in a few niches or niches, being very good in social networking. All of those things I agree are very important. But as I continue to think about my own behaviors and figure out what was the differentiator, what was the thing I felt was the most important, especially when comparing myself and looking at what other resellers would do, for example, at the same places where I was sourcing. I'll share with you an example in just a moment. And then I started to look at more and think about some of the comments that I hear, not only in this channel and in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, both of which have 25,000 members slash subscribers in them. And so I've read tens of thousands of comments, you know, over the years. So I feel like I have a, a good finger on what a lot of people are thinking. And the number one thing that I felt was the differentiator is patience, the ability to be patient. And so then the opposite thought comes in and says, well, if I feel like that's the number one thing that leads to success for me, if you are impatient, isn't that going to be something that rises to the top of the list there in terms of something that could really harm your reselling business. And my personal opinion is I think that it, it is. Uh, let me show you and, and explain to you what I think would be a great example. We're going to do several examples here and then I'll tell you what happened today. So many of you know, I love to go to estate sales, one of many places I love to source, but I could guarantee you 100% of the time when I go out sourcing at an estate sale, no exaggeration that no matter how many people were waiting on the waiting list or waiting online? And sometimes it's well over 100 people. And no matter how packed the house is with stuff, that within an hour of the sale starting and people going in, that the vast majority of those people will be gone, including the resellers. Gone. And I will be the one of the only person's there, or sometimes the only person. Some of you have even commented in my video and you've said, I can't believe you. There's not many people there. I mean, sometimes yeah, I wait until some people step out, but in reality, there's usually not a lot of people left. Here, here a great example. I'll sh let me share my screen with you and show you something. This is one of my favorite videos that I did. This one is called Thousands of Dollars of Treasures Found in a Barn in the Middle of Nowhere. This is the second day of the estate sale. How is it possible that all of these posters are still sitting there the second day? Well, number one, and it has to do with patience, people didn't want to take the time to open up the posters. Number two, there were so many of them there that people didn't have the patience to go through them. Now, how do I know that? I know that because I heard people say it and I watched people say it. Remember, I work as a neuropsychologist, so I am trained uh, professionally at studying people's behaviors and looking for patterns and things like that. And also just being introspective with myself and figuring out that this really is the differentiator. And I kept hearing over and over people saying, you know, they'd maybe look through a couple of them and say, uh, this, is, this is too much work. This is, this is gonna take too long. I don't have the patience for this. 
this is overwhelming. I'm out of here. People would sometimes laugh. And these were people who they were either visibly showing that they had their eBay app. Sometimes I'd hear some cha-chings. Some of them were people I just knew were recognized as resellers. Look at all this stuff. Literally thousands of dollars of posters just, just left behind. So that is just one example. And this is not something that's you know, an uncommon thing. This is something that I see all the time. Another great example of this is when you come across, let's say, a box or a tote. And this is what I see all the time. I call it box surfing. What happens is you'll get a box like this, you'll see it, and it's filled with stuff, lots of papers and stuff, or just things that are just filled in, lots of smalls and stuff. And what happen is someone will walk by it, and this is the sourcing method that a lot of, I see some resellers do this. This is the sourcing method. It's this. Just walk on by. That's it. Or if you're lucky, maybe you'll see this. Like maybe there's like a you know, some some type of paper item up top. Maybe one layer will get lifted up, and that's it. And everything is just left behind. Someone just sent me a message on Instagram. I don't know if he's watching. He could put it in the comment section on how he heard me talking about this. He went to a sale, and he saw five people walking by a box like this, and just you know just looking at it. Maybe just doing a surface look like that, and just walk by. And then he took the time to dig to the bottom, take the stuff out, and he found all the treasures that were in there and he made a lot of money. you got to take the time to do that. Now, people will leave rooms all the time because they don't instantly see the treasure. It's not right there in front of their eyes, so they leave. Or in the case that I just showed you, there clearly is a room with lots of treasures, but it takes time to kind of sort through it and find it. So they run out of the room. Think about this. This makes zero sense. You, you don't want to take the time to go through the treasures that are there because you hope that you'll run into another room and possibly find a treasure that's sitting right there that you could, that you could grab. Why do that if they're already, you're guaranteed 100%, there, there looks like there's a whole bunch of treasures to go through that you should be able to find something but it's just not instant, so you leave. So it's this, this desire for instant gratification. You have to be able to delay gratification. It doesn't have to be instant every time. It takes some time to go through stuff. So that then leads to what happened today in my Facebook group. So in my Facebook group, uh, one of the things that I do there is I post resources and I post news articles in the announcement section that are related to reselling. And as you know, from watching this channel, one of the other areas that my wife and I love to source from is Shop Goodwill, the online auction site. I've done many unboxing videos for you uh, from there. I've broken things down, shown you the cost of goods, and then I've done follow-up videos showing you the sales and the profit margins that we have made, which have been big from some of these scores. And so you know, it's always new people coming into group and stuff and not everyone watches the videos. So I shared a link to this story here. Let me, let me get it up here on the screen for you so you could see it. This is from Forbes. It says Goodwill's Hidden Gem, a growing online business that sold $1 billion of used stuff. So the article goes into, you know, the origins of the company and how much money they're making now and how they plan to grow. So I dropped the link to it into the group and I said something along the lines of, you know, if FYI, if you're not sourcing at Shop Goodwill, you're missing out. And what I got in response to that was a lot of negativity in terms of, well, no, you can't find anything there. It's impossible. Or the prices are too high. You can't find stuff there. Now, you might be watching this right now and thinking the exact same thing. But again, I've shown evidence on this channel that it's not true. I'll, I'll show some examples in a moment. Or the shipping is too high. So you lose all money in the shipping. You, you can't make any, any money that way. Okay. Well, let's go over to Shop Goodwill. This is the site I'm talking about right here. Okay. Now, I have no financial connection to Shop Goodwill. This isn't anything to try to promote them because they paid me or anything like that. That's not the case. Nothing like that. There's no such relationship. I just like finding stuff. I felt it was helpful to share. Look at this. There's an entire area up top you could click on called one cent shipping. And there are 51,268 results. So you mean to tell me 
that there are no good one cent shipping deals out of 51,268. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, just ask my friend Kat, the nurse flipper. Look at her, uh, her video right here. My method for buying on Shop Goodwill that I made thousands from last year. Last year, she even won the thrift battle that she had on my channel from an item that she got through a Shop Goodwill. Or if you don't want to listen to what I'm saying, if you don't want to listen to Kat says, listen to Joe from the Family Flips channel. I mean, this guy. Him and his wife, Jessica, they they source from Goodwill all the time. They make a ton of money from sourcing through there. And they star on a TV show that is about getting like big things, big lots and stuff to unbox. So there's lots of people, lots of examples of people doing very well on there. Uh, I've done many what sold videos that show you these are things like here's an example right here. This is an $80 pin that we got from Shop Goodwill. Um, now we might've taken a couple bucks off, maybe we got 75 from it. I don't remember right now, but this is just an example of things that came in a big Disney lot that we got everything for, I believe it was about like a dollar or piece uh, per item. So there was that one. Uh, then there was another pin that I showed in that video that brought it, yeah, here's another one right here. And I think this one was, I don't remember what the exact price on it was. Here we go, this is a Dumbo pin, another one. Uh, $80. I, I'm pretty sure that one sold for right there. And then later on in the video, uh, there was another one. Where was it? Uh, this charm bracelet here that we also got $175. And we might have taken a little bit off of that. But the point is we had a dollar invested into it. Now, I can't remember right now which items it was that we were able to see some elements of when we were doing the sourcing, but that's how we were able to find it was being patient. When we were looking through the pictures and looking through the photos, we saw certain things. Now the vast majority of stuff, we didn't know what we were getting, but we knew enough from taking the time. This is the key. Again, this is with the patience. We took the time to go through it and to see, okay, listen, there's, there's a few items there that look like they could have some really high potential value that other people missed because they didn't take the time to go through those uh, types of items. So it's very, very important to take the time to go through that stuff. Um, now, you know, I put up this poll here because I'm not exactly sure what the main reason is for a lot of the impatience that I see. Is it more of a generational thing? I'm not sure. I mean, put your comments down below, but I have put a poll up in uh, the community section of my face, uh, not my Facebook group. This is uh, actually in the uh, YouTube channel here, which was if people thought either thought that they had attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, uh, or if they were diagnosed, 13% of people said that they were diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. 10% said they were diagnosed with attention uh, deficit hyperactivity disorder, 14% of people thought they had ADD and 7% of people, uh, thought that they had ADHD. So that's a, a big percentage of, of people. So, you know, if that's something that you want me to do a video about in the future, in terms of, you know, ways to kind of improve some weaknesses that could come from that, uh, that's something I'm certainly open to if people are interested in that. Remember, this is not something that's designed to, to bash people. This is something designed to help people grow because they see it as a persisting problem. Um, over here, you could see videos. I just did a video the other day called Be Sell Fast on eBay for Good Money. This is through a Shop Goodwill a haul that we did. It shows all the animal jewelry Um uh, that we, that we, well, not all, but it shows a lot of it that we sold and the profit that we made on it. And we had barely anything into it and we did very well on it. The Disney stuff. I just talked to Mrs. Primetime before we made this video, we killed it on that lot. And she told me she still hasn't even put up half of the stuff from that yet. So there's still more of that Disney stuff there. Other instances where I see problems with patients has to do with dealing with eBay. Now I've given eBay their fair share of criticism. I've also complimented them when they uh, deserve it. Um, but, you know, the thing I see often is that if eBay does something that people don't like, or if something goes wrong, if they have a return that goes bad, if they felt someone scammed them, if they got a negative feedback, whatever, I hear too many people with, an, with a knee-jerk reaction that just says, that's it, I'm quitting. Either I'm quitting eBay or I'm just quitting reselling. 
for one or two instances of something going wrong. You can't do that. You've got to find ways to work around these problems. As mad as you might be at some of these things, generally, these are things that can be worked around. Now, as I said last night on the show that I did with Don, the auction professor, you go check that out. It was an interview last night on his, on his show. Um, there are instances where if you're really you know, trying your best, you tried your hardest in something and it's just not working out, it's just not a good fit, then yeah, it could be a good time to then move on into something else. But what I'm talking about is people who I think are leaving things prematurely uh, because they're just getting frustrated and they just don't uh, have the patience with things. Take the time to invest into your business, to do the research, to look through things. You know, you have to be able to withstand a few times when you're frustrated about something, either something goes wrong with eBay or there's a lot of stuff in a room when you're going to source or there's some work involved with going through boxes and unfurling posters and that sort of thing, or going through a bunch of listings to try to find something that could be the hidden treasure. That's why it's called treasure hunting. That's why we call it the thrill of the hunt. If it was just sitting right there, and sometimes it, you get lucky, you know, something's sitting right there, you go, you grab it, it's right there in front of your face. Sometimes that will happen. But, you know, a lot of times you got to do some, you got to do some digging. Now, going back to shop good, goodwill for a moment, like I said, there's those one cent shipping things. Um, there's some places that do free shipping. Is the shipping too high in some instances? Absolutely. What do I tell you in that instance? Walk past the deal. Walk past the deal. It's like fishing. You have to be patient with fishing. Sometimes you cast your line into the water and yeah, you grab that big fish the first time. That actually happened the first time I went fishing. I got a sunfish. First time I ever went fishing, threw it in. A sunfish came out. I was like, great. This is how it's going to be like all the time. And then the next time I'm sitting there for like two hours waiting, but it's the same type of thing. You know, sometimes you get a nibble, you Take it out. You think it's something good and it winds up being an old shoe or an old boot and it's not really what you thought it was originally. So you have to throw it back in again. And sometimes you just have a bad day and you got to come back the next day and throw your line in again. So think of reselling like fishing. That could be a good analogy uh, that could help you out. Same thing when I'm sourcing on Craigslist. I will sometimes wait months filtering out all sorts of responses to my Craigslist ad on comic books and collectibles. Well, people sending me offers for things that just aren't worth it or aren't good or leads just turn out bad. I don't just take the ad off, which I'm paying for. I don't just take it off because I had three, four months of nothing. I wait because I just need that one time for that big score to come in. And that's how I've got some of my biggest scores is by being patient. Last thing I want to talk about is taking the time to do the research so that you know to look at certain things on Shop Goodwill and say, wait a minute, this is something that could have value. That takes time. You've got to research into those areas. You've got to get some books, read, watch YouTube videos. Have patience, by the way, with your fellow resellers who have YouTube channels. A lot of them are just getting started for the first time and they can't do everything perfect right off the bat. So if they don't tell you exactly what you're waiting to hear within 60 seconds or, you know, if there's something off with the audio or something, let them know if it, but, you know, be, be nice. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, try not to scare them away. They're trying, they can't have everything perfect the first time around. Now, same thing for, uh, in terms of some advice regarding patience for content creators on YouTube, you got to be patient with that too. You can't grow all this. You can't grow your reselling business or your channel all one day. Yeah, you could be lucky, just like we talked about with fishing. You could get hot, and all of a sudden, you go on YouTube, and you get these killer videos, and all of a sudden, you're like the most popular thing. That's not going to happen to most people. So you've got to take the time to just continue to put the work in and grow. That's the thing. Rome, my, my, dad, my dad always used to say, Rome was not built in a day. It was one of his most famous sayings. And I always think about that because it's so true. So stick with it. If you're trying to build something, you have a dream, stick with that and keep at it and you'll get there. Stop giving up too early on things. There's lots of opportunity out there for everyone. With that being said, everyone, I'm going to sign off for this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you comment down below uh, and also subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I'd really appreciate that. 
And um, I will see you back in the next video, everyone. Take care.